Welcome back to the channel, everybody. We're now on the final part of this series, and it's on logical fallacies. Well, what is a logical fallacy? A fallacy is the invalid or otherwise faulty reasoning or wrong moves in the construction of an argument. A fallacious argument may be deceptive by appearing to be better than it really is. Some fallacies are committed intentionally to manipulate or persuade by deception, while others are committed unintentionally due to carelessness or ignorance. The list of logical fallacies is quite long, and there are many logical traps that the uneducated can fall into. One you might know is the straw man fallacy. Let's use the special pleading fallacy as an example for both religion and leftism. Special pleading is an informal fallacy wherein one cites something as an exception to a general or universal principle without justifying the special exception. It's the application of a double standard. A more dumbed-down definition would be that somebody can see the fault in someone else but are incapable of seeing it in themselves. And usually, when pinned down, they move to the two quo qui fallacy. Okay, well maybe I am doing that, but what about you? So for religion, special pleading would look like this. All of the faiths say that theirs is the correct one, and it's all the other ones that are wrong. When believers say that they don't have enough faith to believe in evolution, it's implying that one uses faith to believe in things that aren't supported by reason and evidence. Of course, they'll list faith as the number one reason why they believe in God or Allah, and when it comes to their beliefs, it's totally fine and not demonized, like it is when applied to attacking evolution. It's a tacit admission that faith is a poor reason to believe in things. For a more detailed look into faith, go back to part one of the series where I break it down more. On the left, we see special pleading with my body, my choice. It's an absolute tenet of the faith when it comes to abortion. The state has no authority to control people's bodies, except when it comes to vaccines, and then my body, my choice is suddenly the dumbest possible thing that you could say. It holds no weight and is apparently ridiculous on its face. We also see it in how the left treats COVID. It's so serious that you can't even be by your parents' bedside as they die, for fear that they might get COVID and die. But if millions of people, record-breaking numbers, by the way, want to get together and scream at each other and spit in each other's faces, well, who are we to stop that? Healthcare officials literally wrote a letter condoning it. It's a very serious virus for all those small businesses we shut down as we get away with the biggest wealth transfer in history. But it's not that big of a deal for us personally. Over and over, we keep seeing politicians and celebrities who violated their own lockdown and mask mandates with no repercussions. Oh my god, four Republicans in a room with no masks? Well, that's a super spreader event. But when it's me and my friends, well, it's just not the same. Every policy that the left has falls into this category. I mean, it's, it's almost redundant to go through them all. One more. You know, borders. Well, that's not who we are. Except, I live in a gated community. Or take the Pope. He says walls are bad while living in a city completely surrounded by walls to keep people out. That's special pleading. It's ridiculous when you do it. It's great when I do it. This is the animating force behind every religion, including now leftism. This is why there's 30,000 denominations of Christianity, not counting Catholicism. They all view the other ones as wrong, as being ridiculous. Obviously, the one that they're a part of is the one true faith. That one Baptist church you ended up in your own town is the true one. It's all the other ones that are wrong. In The God Delusion, Richard Dawkins says that every believer is an atheist to all the other religions. But the atheist just goes one God further. Quote, We are all atheists about most of the gods that humanity has ever believed in. Some of us just go one God further. This refers to the fact that whatever religion you can think of, the believer is absolutely sure of the truth of the one that he is in at the moment, and that it's all the other ones that are false. This is why it's insufferable, by the way, to see that stupid coexist bumper sticker, because all the religions on that sticker historically have fought with each other because they believe that the other one is wrong. 
If you want to know what's wrong with Islam, ask a Christian. You want to know what's wrong with Christianity? Ask a Hindu. You want to know what's wrong with Hinduism? Ask a Jew. Repeat this process ad infinitum. Let's move on to another example. An argument from authority, also called an appeal to authority, is a form of argument in which the opinion of an authority on a topic is used as evidence to support an argument. So for religion, this is ridiculously easy to spot, as it's the basis of the whole thing. Christians believe that the Word of God is actually written by God and not just the people of the time, and so therefore it's infallible, since God is incapable by definition of ever being wrong in any way. The Bible is the authority, and all thinking and actions are filtered through it because it is the beginning and end of truth. So when they're presented with conflicting information about evolution or genetics or geology, etc., etc., all they can do is quote back scripture as their defense. It's that simple. They're going back to their authority. And all that contradiction that you feel in your brain conveniently goes away, providing you comfort that you still remain undefeated and you're still right. This is all going on in the leftist brain as well. St. Fauci recites the latest chapter and verse from his holy scripture, and all his followers act accordingly. We must all get vaccinated to stop the spread of COVID-19, including all of its variants. Of course, when some of the first cases of Omicron in Germany occur almost exclusively in triple-vaxxed people, or if you point out the myriad of complications that have been documented on the VAERS site, they can never change their response. It will only ever be the same mantra of more vaccinations, more masking, more lockdowns, more attempts to try what has only ever failed in the past, which of course is what the authorities like Fauci tells them is the cure, and they can't accept a narrative from outside sources. These are the midwits that want data and research for every obvious fact on earth. These are the idiots who think they're clever by questioning your credentials when you point out a flaw in their logic. These are the idiots who dismiss Fox News simply because it's Fox News. They dismiss any evidence of election fraud because all the news sources they trust and their Bible of CNN will deny that there's any fraud at all. And so no matter how insanely obvious it is that it did happen, they can never accept it because CNN said so. Tucker Carlson is a completely discredited hack in their mind because he's the liberal equivalent of the Christian relationship to atheists like Sam Harris or Christopher Hitchens. Tucker is automatically wrong because he's not a lefty. There's no other factors to think about. His arguments don't matter, his points don't matter, the undeniable facts or clips he plays don't matter. He's Tucker Carlson. That's the end of the story. And in contrast, their own experts are the dumbest people in the room. Don Lemon, Chris Cuomo, Rachel Maddow. These are all the most uneducated, retarded, least qualified people to talk about anything political that you could ever pick. But this is how it works. Same in Christianity. Christian apologists are often the least qualified people to talk on scientific topics. They're former dentists or former electricians or people like Kent Hovind, who pretends to be a former high school science teacher and who unironically calls himself a doctor. His degree is and I'm using air quotes here, is from an accredited mail-in diploma mill that he never attended because they don't have classes, and it only serves to mail out fake degrees to fellow Christians to give themselves the appearance of some authority. And this is where religion and leftism intersect at a crucial point. Since the person who has been anointed to spread the message is often the least qualified person to talk about the message, they inevitably wind up using the same broken arguments over and over and over. Every argument they present is one that has been refuted a thousand times before. Liberals continually repeat the lie that men make more than women, and that this is a form of injustice, even though the answer is one Google search away. They repeatedly ignore the basics of economics, and insist on using their own retarded policies that inevitably lead to inflation, stagnation, recession, or depression. And then they have to change the message after the fact. We're told inflation could never happen by printing ungodly amounts of money. Actually, it will cause inflation to go down. Then when there is actual inflation, we're told that inflation isn't happening. And then we're told inflation is happening, but it's not that bad and it'll go away in a few months. 
And then we're told that inflation is going to be around for a while, but it's actually a good thing. And all of this happens in a matter of a few months. And all the people who trust those authorities get whipped around from point to point without ever realizing they're wrong because actual true facts are not allowed to be considered at any point in the discussion. I want to show you a real-life example of the argument from authority fallacy in action from just the other day, when Brian Stelter released a statement about how Fox News covered the Jesse Smollett story, the hoax narrative. Corrupt, left-wing media mob fueled Smollett's lies and just latest example of efforts to perpetrate hoaxes. Rather than focus on real violence in Chicago, media mob wasted time perpetrating small X hoax. Smollett, guilty verdict, exposes yet another media-driven hoax. Those were the chyrons on Sean Hannity's Fox News program Thursday night after a jury found Jesse Smollett guilty of falsely reporting a hate crime. Hannity and other bad-faith media personalities on the right used Smollett's conviction to predictably attack the news media and to aim to delegitimize the credibility of the entire press. The tactic is dishonest yet simple. Take an actual act of deception, in this case one that was perpetrated by an actor and covered heavily by the press, and then use it to suggest that anything reported by mainstream sources cannot be trusted. Everything is a hoax. Propagandists know that their power increases substantially when they can convince their audiences not to trust other sources of information. And so, Smollett's case is very valuable to them. They can hold up Smollett's guilty verdict and then attempt to extrapolate it into other stories which are politically inconvenient for them. This was on full display during Hannity's program Thursday night. As he discussed the Smollett case, Hannity brought up the three-and-a-half-year Russia lie against Donald Trump. To claim the supposed dishonesty from the press never ends. We're seeing similar attempts to frame the January 6th insurrection at the U.S. Capitol as a hoax fueled by the media and the Omicron variant is being depicted as a hoax invented by Democrats supposedly to steal the election. Of course, the Russia probe, insurrection, and COVID are not examples of hoaxes. And propagandists such as Hannity don't mention stories such as the Seth Rich conspiracy theory that they peddle to their audiences, but that is besides the point. When you cannot argue on the facts, it is much easier to dismiss a story in its entirety and go after the credibility of the press for reporting on it. It's the timeless play, one that played on repeat during the Trump administration and one that is only growing more and more popular in right-wing media. You see, they get caught with their pants down on every single story ever, and now that they're mad that Fox News is out there calling them out on their BS when it comes to this Smollett story, they were wrong on Russiagate, they were wrong on COVID, they were wrong on Joe Rogan and horse dewormer. They are wrong on January 6th. They were wrong about kids in cages. They were wrong about Hunter Biden. They were wrong about the Ukraine phone call. They were wrong about Brett Kavanaugh. They were wrong on Bubba Wallace. They were wrong on Kyle Rittenhouse. They were wrong on Nick Sandman. They were wrong on George Floyd. They were wrong on Jacob Blake. And now they're wrong on Jesse Smollett too. One time is a mistake. Every single time is on purpose, and now they have the balls to gaslight you after the fact, and poison the well, and accuse Fox News of being the propaganda outlet, when literally in each one of those cases that I just listed, it was CNN that used those events to provide social commentary on what an evil, racist, homophobic, xenophobic, bigoted country we are. He literally admits to what he's doing in this memo. Propagandists know that their power increases substantially when they can convince their audiences not to trust other sources of information, like Fox News. And then he does it again. When you cannot argue on the facts, it is much easier to dismiss a story in its entirety and go after the credibility of the press for reporting on it. Hello? Pot? Meet kettle? That's literally what he's doing in this. That is what CNN does. You can't trust these people because they're not in our camp and they're making us look bad. That is the appeal to authority and action. Now this video is getting a little long, so I'll end it here. Maybe in the future I'll do a part two of this series and expound a bit more on some other examples, but for today, that's it. I don't want this video getting 30 minutes long. 
Thanks for watching. It means the world. If you like this video and type of content I'm making, consider giving this video a like or maybe subscribing. I'll see you all in the next video. Peace.